turbine and have that view over there that's just pretty awesome that's almost as awesome as watching that Mike Les guy on YouTube that is one good-looking tractor and grain cart Hello YouTube, Farmhand Mike here, and I am just outside of Canfield, Ohio, Mahoning County, Ohio. This is the northeast part of the state, and I am out in the field with my dad. I've done other farm videos where my dad's in the tractor, but he's never actually in the video. But anyways, my dad's out here helping my cousin John. Uh, he's working ground with a John Deere 7830 pulling an 18-foot Great Plains Turbo Max. And uh, this ground is going to be soybeans. This was corn last year. Run a vertical till over it in the fall, and... Looks like they sprayed it with a burn down, running the vertical till over it now, and then this is going to get planted right away into soybeans. So anyways, uh, just outside of Canfield, this is the old Redgate farm. There's about 200 acres here. Uh, they're renting. And uh, this farm here, I'm going to show you a little bit around it. When I was a little kid, this was a showplace farm. And uh, I know they used to raise beef cattle here. My dad said there were some chicken houses and stuff. I'm not sure what all. Uh, we live just about... I don't know, maybe five, six miles from here. Actually, when I was very young, a toddler, I uh, lived in a house uh, just a mile from here uh, that my parents were renting until they got their house built. And I have very few memories of that. I was pretty young then. But uh, anyways, I remember going by here and this being a very nice place. I, I don't know what actually happened or who actually used to run this. But uh, anyways, I just remember it used to be a beautiful farm to drive by. Now, uh, other than the farmland, uh, being farmed. That's about it. The buildings aren't used anymore uh, and stuff like that. Actually, I think my dad said that this all went up for auction and the uh, Canfield schools bought this. But anyways, uh, let's watch this tractor and this Great Plains Turbo Max and my dad in action. I called my dad, told him I was stopping by the field, so we're just going to wait for him to pull around here. In case you're wondering, my dad's name is also Mike. He is Mike Sr., I'm Mike Jr. and my oldest son is Mike the Third. I am the oldest of three boys. My parents had three of us, Mike, Jeff, and Corey. My brother Jeff passed away back in 2016, but my brother Corey's still around. He's about eight years younger than me. But anyways, wait for my dad to pull around here. I'm gonna jump in the tractor with him. Take around, we'll get some shots of the tractor and the Great Plains uh, Turbo Max in action. And maybe we'll go look at some harvester silos or something like that at the back of this farm. Okay, look at the camera. Ohio where this area is located in Mahoning County Ohio not terribly far from Youngstown but see all those trees in the background there that was once a field but let me tell you there is some mansions of a house back there very beautiful homes that's one thing this area is good at uh, growing crops and growing houses so I know uh, I've picked up a lot of subscribers since I've explained my life story and what I do for a living and farming and all that so this is the area obviously I grew up in and uh, my mom and dad built a house right across the road from my grandpa's farm so i went on the payroll for my grandpa back in seventh grade my grandpa had uh back at that time probably around 25 acres of apple orchard grew over 100 acres of sweet corn uh pumpkins and uh, of course corn soybeans wheat and some oats rye i remember all that and had three chicken houses or lane houses my dad actually went to work for General Motors up in Lordstown, so my dad is a retired auto worker, and my dad's always helped out on the farm. Actually, the first person I ever rode in a tractor with and that let me drive a tractor was my dad, and if I remember right, 
that would have been back into a white 285 probably is what I remember. He would go out there and work down some sweet corn ground real early in the morning and I'd go in there, jump in that uh, cab and I think that first white 285 had an old year round cab on it if anyone remembers that. And we pulled a Miller offset disc back in those days. My dad's brother, Ed, my Uncle Ed, he actually took over, bought the farm from my grandpa. He also had an excavating business, and uh, he passed away several years ago. My cousin, John, who is exactly the same age as me, runs the family farm now. My dad's retired. My dad helps out on the farm a lot. But the uh, chicken part of the farm that my grandpa used to have, my dad bought that part of the farm, and we ripped out all the cages I think I was in 6th or 7th grade when that happened. Ripped out all the cages, put in all the equipment to raise broilers, did that for one year, and the company my dad was under contract with moved out of the state of Ohio. So we was kind of at a standstill, and my dad actually started raising pheasants. And there was a time we was raising anywhere from four to 7,000 pheasants a year, selling them to local hunting clubs, game clubs, and so forth. I went to school for agriculture mechanics, so I actually always helped part-time on the farm, a lot of the spare time that I had after school and so forth, and I worked for a local farm equipment dealer that was Whitmer's Incorporated back in the day, and I worked there for several years, and then I got a job with Gale Company as a service rep, and Gale said I had to move across the state of Ohio, so I moved to western Ohio. Luckily enough, I moved out in the country and started helping some area farmers part-time, on the weekends and stuff but i'm five hours from here so it's hard to come back to the family farm and help out i'm just lucky i live in rural america in western ohio so those videos you see me where i'm farming and stuff at home i'm helping a neighboring farm so my family does still farm my cousin john runs it back here and my dad's a part-time farm hand so 1995 is when i went to work for gale company as a service rep i moved to western ohio in 96 and I worked for Gale Company. Of course, they quit making the egg implements and everything and was just skid loaders, construction equipment. I didn't enjoy it anymore. That's when Versatile was looking for a traveling service rep for the United States. And that's when I went to work for Versatile. And I don't regret it at all. I've been with Versatile for 12 years now. And actually, I am no longer a service rep for Versatile. I just took a new position in dealer development. So when Versatile signs up a new dealer, I travel around the country and help new dealers get set up, uh, train them on parts, the dealer portal, warranty, service, product training, and all that good stuff. Anyways, I'm going to fly the drone here. This is what's left of the old Redgate farm, and I never knew this until I got here today. This lane goes back, and at one time they must have fed cattle way back this lane and there's actually a barn back here a couple harvest store silos and what looks like an old trench or bunk silo let's go back here and take a look these are definitely some of the older harvest stores especially that one to the right i believe that is one of the original the one to the left has the blue roof and they later changed that to a white roof I don't know if I've ever talked about this in uh, any of my YouTube videos, but when I was a little kid, like probably, I don't know, fourth, fifth grade, uh, back then, you know, a pretty good sized dairy operation was uh, 80 cows. And I used to love looking at these blue silos back then. And I decided then, when I grow up, I'm going to be a big dairy farmer. I'm going to milk 250 cows. I'm going to have a bunch of these blue silos. I'm going to have a Heston stack hand. I'm going to be top dog. Well, anyways, I never become a dairy farmer. I don't have any blue silos, and I do have a Heston stack can though, but uh, anyways, if all that would have come true the way things worked out, I probably would have went broke as soon as I started, but um, you know, I, I still like these blue silos. Every time I see one, I, I look over, I still think these were some, you know, good days in agriculture back then when a family could make a living, you know, milking 80 cows, whatever, have some silos. Uh, the silos were pretty to look at, but when you talk to somebody that actually had several of these and they tell you all the stories of uh, unloading, uh, unloader problems and stuff like that, there's not so many good memories of these. But uh, anyways, they're still pretty to look at. There's still a lot of them standing. I would love to know how many of these harvest store actually built across the United States and Canada because 
because uh, there's a lot of them still out there and I'm gonna bet uh, the biggest percentage of them are not in use but uh, like I said still pretty to look at let's check these things out uh, with some drone shots looking back it looks like Harvester started putting up silos in 1949 and that one uh, far side that's the old uh, logo decal and so forth and then this is the newer one but they later switched that and they have a white roof on them I believe Harvester was out of Arlington Illinois they also had manure storage which was called a slurry store and um, I think I have one of those in the background and maybe a video of mine or two but these silos had a bottom unloader and you know there was a lot of horror stories about these but i do talk to some guys that still use these and guys that really got along good with these it was my understanding if you put wet crop in here that was asking for trouble some guys have converted these over and use them for grain storage and so forth but back in their day if you had one of these people really looked up to you the concrete or old stave silos had a top unloader, so when you would go to fill them, you would have to raise your unloader up, so if you had any crop at the bottom of the silo, that stayed in there, and then you would have to feed down to it, where these unloaded out of the bottom, so you didn't have an unloader to raise and so forth. So in theory, this was the way to go. Now, there was some concrete silos made that had bottom unloaders too back in the day. Uh, Profit Center is one of the names I remember from back then. But hey, let's walk in the old feed room here and take a look. And look inside these silos maybe there's an unloader in here we can check it out oh yeah the old Goliath unloader I probably don't want to crawl in there who knows what kind of critters are in these things What a view. So I was going to get the truck to get my dad some fuel because he was getting low and I was back there screwing around looking at those harvest or silos and he's driving a tractor back here to get fuel so man my dad hasn't yelled at me for a long time let's see what happens here. Can I fit in there to fuel it? What are you gonna fill it right here? Uh, why don't you pull up a ways and I'll just uh, drive forward. Okay. That yeah, that'll work. Oh! Oh! wasn't so bad he never even yelled at me he didn't care wow I just learned something if you want my dad to disappear just pop a camera up wow I mean he got away fast <laughs> I believe this sprayer is new to the farm this season.
This video is coming to an end. So this John Deere 7830 tractor, my cousin John actually bought this brand new, I believe. So they keep stuff a long time here. There's still a Minneapolis Jetstar in the barn, and my dad said that tractor was bought brand new when he was a freshman in high school, and it pulled a three-bottom rollover plow. Anyways, maybe sometime we'll have to get that out and do a video. It'd be kind of cool to do a video, show you around the old family farm. Maybe someday I'll do that. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. Feel free to comment below, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Remember, you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Farmhand Mike. And as always, thanks for watching and supporting my social media.